In this video, we're going to focus on creating a zoom functionality for our donut chart in Chart.js 4, where, where we basically could say zoom in. As you can see here, what we're doing now is just maximizing this space. And of course, if you want to press this button to reset it, it will go back to its original state. So to create the zoom button, first of all, we will need our border template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to have the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, got a question, put it on Discord. So what we're going to do here is first convert this into a donut chart. So your donuts, and then I'm just going to remove the scales. We don't have a scale for the donut chart. So we get this nice chart here, but of course we need to make sure that the width here is a bit smaller. Let's say 400 pixels. There we are. So what I will do here is, because that was specifically the question, what to do if one of these values is very, very large, like this. So as you can see here now, it's very hard to see this tiny sliver of data here. So we need to figure out this. Basically, in my personal opinion, removing this one would solve the issue if this has no real value, while the others are maybe specific information. So what we want to do here now is, instead of hiding this, we're going to use a zoom function where we just create an artificial hiding of or changing that data. So let's start to look at what we need to do. To create this button, I'll be here in the options, and the first thing I'm going to do here is say on resize. So what I want to do is that when we resize this, we want to draw some more. We'll draw something, but if we resize the chart, the button will align with it nicely. So what I'm going to say here, context function error expression, and then what I'm going to do here is First of all, I'm going to say let, and I'm going to say here zoom button. I'm going to check if there is a zoom button. I'm going to say here, uh, hold on, that will be, and then we say here equal document. Uh, there we are. Document dot get element by ID, and the ID will be in this case. Uh, we can say here the zoom button. So we didn't create this, but we're going to search for it if it already exists. This is the most important, that's number one. So then what I want to do is say if the zoom button does not exist, which is the case probably when we are loading on in when there's like an initial load, then we want to create the button. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to say here zoom button will be equal to document dot create the element of button and I'll just just put in cap blocks but you can do it any way you want so then I'm going to say here once I have this button I want to create a text with it so I'm going to say constant we say here button text and a button text will be very simple we say your document dot create a text node text node and make sure we have a dot there we are and then in this text node, I'll just make this a plus sign as a zoom button. So it will be zooming in and then maybe minus or reset button to zoom out. Very straightforward. So then once we have that, I want to say here, I'm going to give it an ID name, so zoom button. And then we say here dot ID will be equal to what exactly? Well, the zoom button. We need to check if this exists. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to create a button, but this button must have the ID of what we're looking for. Very straightforward. So then what I want to do here, and this is maybe an extra, if you want to give it a class, some design. So we're going to say here class list dot add, and then we're going to add here maybe any class you want. I'll just say here hello, so you will see eventually later on, we create a button with the name or with the class name hello. So once we did this, uh, we need to make sure that we're going to put the position nicely because what we're doing is we're drawing on top or within the canvas, but it is an HTML element, meaning we need to control the position relative to this canvas. Luckily, CSS has these functions and we're going to apply that here. So what I'm going to say here is the zoom button dot style dot position 
and the position will be relative. So relative from the canvas. So once we did that, then we can say here zoom button, and then we're going to put this in. So uh, we're going to append. Well, first of all, I want to add the text, or well, let's first do one thing here is see if we can put in the button before we even do anything else. So we're going to your context dot canvas dot parent node. So what I basically want to do now here, I want to append a child. So we're going to see here append child and append child basically means adding a child to in this case the parent node. We're looking for the parent node of our context canvas which is basically the canvas where it is in position. So then what is the child? That will be the zoom button. So let's put it in there. If I save this, refresh, and then, uh, all right, let's see here. We don't see anything yet. Uh, let's see why. And of course, well, remember I'm appending it, but where are we exactly appending? What is the pixel coordinate for this? So we're adding it on relative to the canvas, but we didn't specify the pixel on the X and Y coordinates, which makes sense. So, that's what we're going to do here now. So what I want to do is after we have this if statement here, if there's no zoom, I want to make sure that we do have the exact coordinates. So I'm going to say a constant and going to give it an X position. And the X position would be basically the width of the canvas here. Now I want to put maybe somewhere here in the corner. So we're going to say here context dot width. And then I'll just do minus 40 because if I do the width from left to right, it will be outside here. So I'll say minus 40 pixels, so it will move 40 pixels inwards or to the left. So once I did that, I'm going to do the same for the Y position. And the Y position will be uh, context.height. And then we're going to say here minus 50 pixels. And probably I need to do a negative because the height itself will be from top to bottom. So what I want to do is negative, so it will push it up. So we say this, and we have to make sure that we multiply this by a negative one. So here, multiply by a negative one. All right, so once we have this, we can now assign the exact coordinates. We say zoom button dot style dot left. How many pixels to the left? We can say here X position plus the pixel corners. All right, and then we can do the same, but then for the top coordinates. Say top, Y, save, refresh. All right, let's see where we are. Is it showing at all? Right now, not. Let's see if we do have it. Let's double check this and there. Let's double check. We have here an item. We do have the button here, but the button looks like it shows itself, but probably it's missing. Or is this the button? I think I'm not sure, but I have a feeling that this is the button. It's hard to spot. So what we're missing is the text. So let's do the text now. So zoom button, and then we say here dot append the child. So what is the child as well? In this case, the text is the child of the button. So this is the parent of the button. So the, that's uh, that's the button apparently uh, clearly and then here the child so what is the child the text is the child of the button and the button is the child of the canvas so if i save this do that one refresh there we are all right so now we have something here so what i do want now is to create this artificial zoom by maybe reducing the size of this so what I want to do here is the following. Let's say in here, uh, let's create a zoom functionality. So we say zoom button dot add event listener. And then here we say, if we click, then I want to make sure that E, though for the event, we record the event and the event will do the following. We're going to say go and trigger this specific function is called the zoom function so of course the zoom function doesn't exist yet so that's what we're going to do here i'm going to put it down here make sure it's after the my chart object because this one 
will be used later on. So what I'm going to say here, function, let me say here zoom, and what I'm going to do in here is, well, we're going to say here, first of all, we're going to do my chart, and then we're going to say here, uh, in the my chart, let's make it very simple, say data.config, and then we're going to say here, dot data, dot data sets and what I'm really doing here is I want to go into this specific data for this case the last data will be always the highest value so I will be using this one and just assign this maybe a lower value or a zero for now it doesn't really matter in this case so say data dot data and then here what I want to do is I guess we could say a six or a length of We'll just leave it for this for uh, leave this as it is and i'll just say here this will be equal to 50. very short make it smaller than what it is so once i did this you can say here my chart dot update and when we update this save refresh click on that you can see here it's changing of course what i want to do is to do a reset button so let's create that reset button as well so in here what you can do here just copy all of this Put that in there and now we're going to say this will be our reset button copy all of this zoom will be reset this here will be the button text reset and i'll just say this will be an r and remember we have a class here so if you want to give it a border radius or whatever you can just do that easily in the class in css i'll cover it later on so reset button then we say here reset button this of course here this will be the reset function here we need to change it maybe instead of 50 in height you can do 30 in height that should be fine and then the reset button should be made here as well we're going to copy this we say here reset and for this reset i'll just put it back on 9000 yes there are other ways to do it but i'll just leave it for as it is so oh all right then something is giving me an error let's see what's going on here uh exposition all right that makes sense exposition number two we're not allowed to use this twice so number two there we are uh 125 what is 125 all right uh let's see okay i think we're missing something here or what is going on so you have the context hold on i'll just check this all right so this error was basically i am forgetting here the closing item so let's make sure we close that correctly curly braces and a parentheses so we save this refresh now we get another one is the button text is not defined so we had here text button reset so button text should be text button reset of course because that's the r all right you can see here maybe we could put them more nicer together um let's see if that is there we are i think that looks quite decent if ever i'm sure that there's a class in here you can see zoom and then the class is hello so we just grab that and let's do very basic css dot hello so here border radius uh oh that's like this of course radius um 20 pixels or or more let's save that refresh there we are i think that looks decent maybe with 20 pixels height 20 pixels save all right this this border radius I think that's that's good enough for now all right so now we have that maybe we could fine tune that maybe here 40 and 30 or this should be maybe 30 there we are that's nicely underneath of course so if i press here plus and then if you do reset there you are you can see here now we have this artificial way it's almost like hiding this however i believe what would be very nice is to highlight this area to mark this area with a line so that it looks like this will be the zoom and then we will cut that that the zoom would be uh, similar to this shape but zoomed in so that would happen at maybe here to there somewhere like that and to do that 
I guess this video number two would be more practical to do that or to apply that one. So there will be a part two for that.